morning. morning. Everyone is standing. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will do what? Rejoice. Rejoice and be glad. Well, I invite you to share with me in a grand old hymn of the church this morning. And let's sing together and sing it from your heart. Come thou almighty king. Truth family, it's a good day, yes? yes. Come on, we're gonna lift our voices in praise this morning. If you're glad to be here, say, I'm glad to be alive.
put those hands together. It's a good day to be in the house of God. Anybody glad to be awake and alive and aware? Uh, Reverend uh, Mr. Minister Samuel said this morning, I'm grateful because he's been faithful. Anybody, can you feel that? Every praise is to our God. God, my Savior. God, my Deliverer. God, my Healer. Yes, she is. Hey. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for just a moment. I'm going to invite uh, Miss Cheryl Handy to come to the uh, platform. And uh, we're going to read uh, just a, a quick affirmation about the beauty of interfaith celebration. Thank you, Pastor D. Good morning, beautiful spirit and truth community. Pastor D, you know I have to add my own little spin to it. Just want to remind us as Rumi, 13 Persian Port Rumi, continues to remind us, the breeze at dawn has something to tell us. Don't go back to sleep. This spirit-filled, inclusive community is awakened, and we will not go back to sleep. So as we close here, and as I close with this affirmation and prayer, let us be reminded, God is not a Christian. God is not a Jew, a Muslim, or Hindu, or a Buddhist. All of these are human systems which human beings have created to try to help us walk into the mystery of God. I, we, honor our tradition. I, we, walk through our tradition. But I don't think our tradition defines God. I, we think it only points us to God. Amen, amen. This quote is from Bishop John Shelby Spahn.
testing one two good to see you in the house today sweet spirit in this place everybody big smile big deep breath if you will and for these blessings lift up hearts in praise doubt will know when revived when we said he did won't he do it yes he will won't he will good to see you in the morning uh this morning it is good to be here uh pastor brandy is working in uh, Carrollton, georgia this morning i'm sure she's watching she is so grieved that she is not here today this is a special day uh, for us at spirit and truth sanctuary we will be ordaining uh in just a moment pastor mike williams uh, under the covering of the international communion of expanding consciousness also uh, welcoming him as a brand new member of Spirit and True Sanctuary Festival. <laughs> We put this, I uh, actually asked Pastor Mike to put this video together to just show a brief history of our connection with Pastor Mike Williams, uh, his connection with uh, the late Bishop Carlton D. Pearson for so many years. This uh, video is going to bless you. And then uh, Brandy sent us a video as well as she feels like that Mike Williams is her son, even though he's a little bit older than her. She thinks that she is his mother, uh, and she is, and she mothers him in many ways. Uh, but we'll have two videos, but I want you to enjoy this video uh, of Pastor Mike Williams, his journey uh, into the ministry. See, watch, you see that little, the little, what that, my, my little dancing brother. He come out of there dancing. That was God, he was the man. White folks usually just kind of just, just, they just do anything. Now we got these little charismatic blacks, that that's all they know how to do. And you got little white boys that come in and step up. We need to thank God for Azusa. And we need to thank God for Carlton Pearson. Jesus is not the founder of Christianity because he didn't come to establish a new religion. He came to free you from religion. One of the biggest misconceptions is that Azusa is a black thing. It is not a black thing. And it wasn't very serious, but his wife wanted him to go to the emergency room and have him get. So he drove himself to the hospital. And when he got to the hospital, he, he saw two doors. One said male and one said female. So he entered the door and said male. And when he got inside, he saw two more doors. One said over 40 and one said under 40. So he entered the door and said over 40. And when he got inside, he saw two more doors. One said upper body and the other said lower body. So he entered the door that said upper body, and when he got inside, he saw two more doors. One said external, and the other said internal. So he entered the door that said external, and when he got inside, he saw two more doors. One said serious, one said not so serious. So he entered the door that said not so serious, and he found himself out on the parking lot. So he got in his car and drove home. And when he got home, his wife said, well, did they help you? He said, no, but they sure weren't working on it. That is the church today. I remember you coming to my office saying that you wanted to be a part of the ministry and that you were available in any way and that really touched me and you were so humble about it and, and you got up and left my office and I thought, I said to somebody who was there, I'm, we're going to find a place for that young man. <laughs> I liked, the, I liked the fact that you danced in the Holy Ghost like we dance. 
and that you were somehow connected to the essence of the ministry and our desire to integrate the cultures and show that the Holy Ghost is no respecter of persons or that God of Jesus isn't as well. Um, and it was not long after that you were here. And you're one of the last ones that, have, that are still with me after all those years, through all this. I call you the curator of the ministry. You know everything about the, the museum we are became. Um, your love for God, your sensitivity to the Holy Ghost, and you were dancing in the spirit and dancing in a great flow, and the people were fascinated. When so many people walked away from him, I was a young minister. I'd made a lot of connections through Azusa. But I stayed. I stayed because I loved him that much. Number two, I believed in the message. But mostly, sitting at his table meant more to me than standing on his platform. Thank you. is uh, real um, that um, Pastor Mike Williams carried and carries uh, for our late uh, founder and um, father of church reform. I believe the, one of the greatest voices of modernity. Uh, history books are already recording. Harvard University is already aware. Morehouse College is aware of the impact that Carlton D. Pearson has had not just on the Pentecostal church, but Christendom, uh, religious constructs, society in general. And uh, we're here to honor that, uh, that ongoing legacy today in Pastor Mike Williams. There's one more video. Uh, Pastor Brandy uh, was so upset that she could not be here this morning, so she sent a video. I think she's probably slept cum cumulatively probably three or four hours in the last couple of days. And so we're sending some love, some strength to you, Pastor Brandy. We know, we know that trouble don't last always. The devil is going to be busy, uh, but it's always darkish right before the da dawn. And you're going to get a nap sometime today in Jesus' name. So... This is a message from Pastor Brandon. Good morning to my Mike, my special, special friend Mike, and the entire Spirit and Truth family. Good morning. I am so, so, so disappointed that I am not with you all today. I miss you and love you. But to Pastor Mike Williams, I just wanted to tell you, this is such a special day. You're not only a friend to me, to DE, to our entire family personally, but you are a friend to Spirit and Truth Sanctuary. And what a long overdue day to make this connection sort of official. And I just wanted to say one thing. Our Papa Pearson would be so proud today and so grateful for this connection. He left us together. He left us prepared, and I am just sending you all the hugs, all the kisses this morning, and I am with you guys, lifting you up, and I love you all so, so much. Have a wonderful service. Beautiful. Very, uh, very heartfelt. You can tell that uh, Brandy both loved her late bishop, uh, who she called Papa, and loves her oldest son, Pastor Mike Williams. And so uh, I'll ask if the presbytery will come and uh, join me on stage. Let's gather a few of them. Pastor Mike, will you come to the, uh, to the kneeling altar? Bishop White, will you join me, sir? As Pastor Mike Williams is kneeling uh, today, we want to say a special thank you to once again, uh, Miss Pansy Gordon, who has uh, vested him with his beautiful church dress today. It's amazing. Thank you, Pansy, for everything that you're doing. <laughs> Pastor Mike, you were 22 years old when you met uh, Carlton Pearson. 30 years of love and loyalty that you gave to him, to his ministry. When others left, you remained. You remained loyal. You remained uh, committed to the cause. And 
I think it is appropriate to say you may remain committed to the man, not just to the message. We thank you for that. From evangelical constructs into interfaith celebration, into uh, divine oneness, you have learned to celebrate truth as a journey and not as a destination. You have learned to use love to interpret the Bible and not the Bible to tell you how to love. Thank you. Time is an interruption in eternity. You've heard that said before. Jesus showed up in time to show us what God did in eternity. What does that mean for you today, Pastor Mike? There is no pre hire D Mike Williams. <laughs> there is no pre Azusa Mike Williams. There is no post CDP Mike Williams. There is only Mike Williams. who showed up in time to continue the process of eternal unfoldment. The eternal spirit having a temporary human experience and expression. I prayed this week uh, without ceasing, God, what would be the word to give to, to my friend, uh, to my co-creator, fellow architect in inclusion. And God took me um, kind of to a cliche, probably the verse I've read uh, as much or more than any other verse in scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. And of course, it goes on through what love is and uh, all the things love is not. But then it comes to a place that I think you can connect to. It's a place of mystery. It says, in that day, in that kingdom awakening, it says tongues will cease, prophecies will fail, and knowledge will vanish away. Interesting. And so the tongues that cease, the knowledge that vanishes away, it's just part of our unfoldment. All that remains is love. All that remains is essence. We are not here to grow knowledge. We are here to know love. The past is not gravestones, but grace stones in your life. Stepping stones into your next iteration of your ongoing becoming and awakening. It is our honor today to recognize what God is already doing in you, through you and as you. Your gifts have made room for themselves to connect with you in architecting this message, movement, mission, and mandate that Carlton Pearson leaves into our charge. You are now uh, officially coming into the International Communion of Expanding Consciousness. You will help to architect a movement that will change the world, that is changing the world. And we welcome you specifically today to Spirit and Truth Sanctuary as an official member living in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but just one quick flight away from your family here. I'm going to ask uh, Bishop Stephen White, if you will, to come and say what you will, Bishop, and then lead us in our prayer of ordination. Will you stand with us today? family, his new covenant family, 
we thank you thank you that for years he has spent behind the scenes being the quiet voice being the ghostwriter being the producer yes being the architect of a movement behind the scenes but now the stage is shifting thank you god and the curtain is being pulled thank you god thank you and he stands on the stage with a word in his mouth yes, yes. that will continue to revolutionize this entire planet for the greater awareness and the expansion of minds. Thank you, God. Thank you. The ascension of consciousness. Yes. And Father, we bless him. We bless the works of his hands, the fruits of his labor. Thank you. We bless the days of his life. And Father, I call on the anointing thank you. Thank you. that destroys thank you. every yoke thank you, God. Thank to you. rest in him, on him, thank through you. him. Yes. In the name and nature yes, of the Christ, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we give your name all the glory thank you. Thank you. and all of the praise. Thank you, God. Thank and, you. So it is. and so it is. And so it shall be. And so it shall be. Wow, let the church say amen. Amen. Pastor Mike, will you stand with us today? Gives me great joy to present to you as a pastor in the networking churches of the International Communion of Expanding Consciousness and as the newest member of Spirit and Truth Sanctuary, Pastor Mike Williams. Sincerely, um, 20, 27 years ago, I was ordained by Bishop Carlton Pearson into the Azusa Fellowship. But the Azusa Fellowship has not existed for over 20 years. And I thought after he passed, does that, is that ordination still relevant? And because of who it came from, I believe it is still relevant. But we're in a new place. We're in a new iteration. Yes, yes. And I, I started asking Bishop the questions about ICEC should somebody be ordained twice and I just I, I knew that this is where I needed to be in my in my spiritual journey and you know as a as a as many of us as a former fundamentalist evangelical <laughs> judgmental arrogant <laughs> extremely arrogant uh, <laughs> Christian I used to say I'm I'm not religious I'm spiritual because I thought religious is what everybody else was and if you were a Christian you were spiritual nope Christians are some of the most religious people on the planet <laughs> and religious over things they don't even know why they're religious about them and believing things they don't even know why they believe them because I know because I was one of them and I found out in in this journey and even more over the last several several months that spirituality is moving beyond the historical Jesus person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and moving into the spirit and consciousness of the Christ. Wow, 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 yes. Spirituality is not a badge that we wear to show how great we are. <laughs> it's a thing that makes us even more servant. Wow. To those who are seeking as we are. And who are learning as we are and we never stop learning mm -hmm. 
and we never stop just our encounters he's he's a god he's not as we heard earlier he's he's not god is not a christian but god is not a muslim god is not a hindu god is not even a jew and yet he is a god for the christian yes yes he's a god for the muslim He's a God for the Hindu, for the Jew, mm -hmm. for the Sikh, mm -hmm. for the black man, for the white man, yes. for the gay man, mm -hmm. for the woe man, yeah, for the <laughs> and every other person that there is that is part of mm -hmm. the oneness of God. Jesus, when people came to Jesus and wanted to throw him off a cliff and said you're you're we we understand you're 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 saying you are you you and god are the same you're god jesus looked at him and said you're god mm -hmm. right what's your what's your issue with me you're god mm -hmm. wow and the idea that they were god was just too much to handle so they killed him Wow, wow, wow. And today we're finding out that we're God. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. If a drop of water in the ocean, if you take that drop out of the ocean and you examine it and you analyze it, mm -hmm. you will find that it is 100% an exact match Come on now. of the water that's in the ocean. Come on, yes because it came from the ocean. Mm. The ocean's just bigger. Yeah. The ocean's just more of it. Mm -hmm. Each of us are a drop mm. of God. Wow. We're each a drop of the ocean. Mm -hmm. Good word. That yeah. is God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. If, 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 every, if everything produces after its kind. Come on now. And a, and an elm tree produces elm trees, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a cat produces kittens, and a dog produces puppies. Come on now. And a fish produces fish. Come on. Then what does a god produce? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. For opening your doors, your home your heart I really believe um, that before Bishop Pearson left and it was literally just before he left I feel like he put our hands together yes and said I'm I'm gone but here <laughs> y'all need each other <laughs> I was gonna hold your hand yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I'll say this and take my seat. Carlton Pearson was and is my spiritual father. Yes. And he's gone. But I gained a family. Mm. Not just this man and his family, but all of you yes. have become a family wow, wow, wow. to me. And I thank you. Bless you. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Come on, give Mike one more big hand. Thank you, Pastor Mike. We love you. We could, we could take about, about 60 seconds and just talk to about three people around you. Tell them it's good to see you in the house today. You're looking good. You're looking happy and healthy.
comes in your life, yeah. He will bear your burden, yeah. He will remove all misery and strife. Once again, to Spirit and Truth Sanctuary, where the whole household of God is welcomed and wanted. We're glad that you're in the space today. We know that we share sacred space. We also don't uh, prescribe to fatalism um, or things that are predetermined, but we do know that we are vibrational creatures in a vibrational universe and that we attracted you here today. What does that really mean is that you deserve to be around some good people. We are good people. We are healthy, handsome, beautiful, inside and out. We like joy. We take our laughter very seriously. We are forgiving, compassionate. We are inclusive. We are a giving people. And so if you found your way to us today, you must be made of some really good stuff because I'm all that and a bag of chips. Amen, somebody. So. <laughs> I did want to welcome a couple of first timers with us today. I believe visiting in the house today is uh, Michael uh, Tracinda and Logan McCoy. Will you stand the McCoy family if you're here today? Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you for being here. Bless you, so glad that you're here today. Also wanted to welcome back um, uh, Michael Baguma, who is here with his uh, wife and children. We're in the process of assisting him uh, with the transfer of his visa. Uh, let's give Michael Baguma and his, his family a big hand. Yeah. Thanks for being here. He, is, uh, he has been attending uh, on and off for a little over a year, I think, and uh, is a student at uh, Columbia Theological Seminary. He is desirous of learning more about inclusion and taking it back to the motherland. And so there is quite uh, a revival uh, of thought, of, of openness, uh, of, of higher iterations of understanding Christ consciousness that is happening all over the continent of Africa right now. It's, it's very exciting that we get to be, uh, play a very small part in that. And so uh, we know that Michael will be a part of that and we'll let you know in the future how we're gonna assist him uh, in, the, in his tran the transfer of his visa. Spirit and Truth Sanctuary is called uh, to, help, uh, to help Michael uh, do this. I uh, also wanted to uh, give you just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, last week, we wanna say thank you uh, to the Chapman family who went above and beyond uh, to make sure, amen. I think uh, they finally had about 70 or more uh, children uh, having their Easter egg hunt last, year, uh, last week, feeling included and celebrated. Uh, of course, we know that Easter is not about the Easter bunny, but Easter is about giving. It is about sharing. It is about community outreach. And so thank you to the Chapman family for everything uh, they did. Uh, that's for last, um, uh, last Sunday. Happy birthdays uh, to Debbie Kelly, um, to Nevia Smith, 
Maverick uh, Shivers, uh, to Casey Revere, Nisha Johnson, and Marie Thompson. And I think last week we said her name, I know that we did, uh, but she told me she did not hear it. But she is here this week, and she told me that she has her, her hearing apparatus on to help her. Uh, and I think it's worthy of saying happy birthday again because she just celebrated her 95th birthday. Yeah. I want Miss, Miss Irene Coffey to stand. Happy birthday, Irene. Ninety, ninety-five years young. My goodness, my goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Ninety-five. I want to know what the secret is. What you're eating? What you're, what you're reading? Who you, who you're talking to? I need to know all of it. What you're planting in your garden? I want to know all of those things. She, she told me this morning, just living right. Just been living right. So, ninety-five years young. We love you, Miss. I've been here for many, many, many years. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Uh, daily devotion begins again tomorrow, 7 a.m. Thank you for uh, all of the well wishes this week. I did nothing but stare at the water and take naps and, and just enjoyed myself. I uh, had, uh, at my, we call us the Three Musketeers because when, when Micah was away at college, we were, we were lonely without him. And so we kind of uh, formed a, an interesting bond together. But um, Micah had school this week. Esther was out, so we took her... Uh, to Amelia Island, Florida for a few days and it was just beautiful right on the beach and uh, they allowed dogs on the beach and so my dogs were just running all over the place and uh, swimming in the water and acting like they knew what they were doing. Uh, we had a good time. Uh, Brandy worked the entire week and so she looked out upon the beach as we were enjoying ourselves and still working. Uh, it's, going to, it's going to end at some point, and uh, I know that my wife is going to get back to a normal schedule in Jesus' name, um, and that if she does not, we're going to find another job. Come on, somebody. Amen. There's, there's too much money out there to be made to working for people, working you this hard, so we're going to be just fine. Uh, thanks, thanks for your uh, wishes. We'll be back to a normal schedule this week. Tuesday morning, connection service, 11 a.m. in person and online. Tuesday night, um, we'll, we'll, we will have uh, Bishop Carlson uh, Pearson's show. That's 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern. Wednesday night is our Inclusion 101. That's 6.30 online. And then Friday, again, our morning devotion. I did want to give you a, a little praise report. Tomorrow night, right here in, the, uh, in our church parsonage, I will gather, uh, feed, fellowship, uh, but also talk with uh, many of the young seminarians from Morehouse College. And so we'll provide them, we're calling it Mexican, Mexican food, Mexican margaritas, mysteries with the Morehouse men. <laughs> so, so, and if you want to add Malcolm, Martin, and Mandela, that's a whole lot of them. But, uh, brilliant young minds open to the ideas of expanding consciousness. And so that will, we will actually record a show tomorrow night that we will air on uh, Bishop Carlton D. Pearson's The Gospel of Inclusion and expose the country to the upcoming preachers, ministers, thinkers, seers, apostles, prophets, future bishops, future Carlton Pearsons who are open uh, to seeing a bigger and better vision and version of what we call God. And uh, I fell in love with them a few months ago uh, at, at our talk back when I preached at Morehouse College. And uh, we've just been really connected since then. And so we'll gather tomorrow night. Be in prayer over this connection. I do think that this is part of architecting inclusion. It is, uh, it is necessary for us to, to ordain, to, to set forth, to go into other nations, but it's also necessary for us to be aware of what's happening in our city. And what's happening in our city is Atlanta University, or the Atlanta University campuses. Uh, Morehouse College is a stalwart uh, in Atlanta, is uh, certainly historic. Uh, it's a big week. Morehouse College students will come here uh, to tape a show for Carlton D. Pearson, and then this Thursday, uh, and I'll give you just a chance if you want to look at your bulletin real quickly, uh, the details are there. This Thursday, Bishop Carlton Pearson will be inducted or he'll be part of the portrait induction at, at Morehouse College. That means uh, for as long as, the, as his portrait survives, uh, it will hang in the hallowed halls of Morehouse College's uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. International Chapel. He will uh, have his portrait hung right beside uh, Pastor Clary's Palk. 
uh, the proclamation that we made over him as a modern day church reformer, certainly not a heretic, but reminding us of what we have walked away from, uh, will also hang beside his picture or his portrait. And that's at 7 p.m. on uh, Thursday night at the Morehouse Chapel. I will uh, offer this to you. We, are, we still have some vacancies or some uh, empty spots. If you'd like to ride in our church shuttle, we've gone to the lengths of, uh, of renting a shuttle. If you don't like to drive at night, you certainly can ride the shuttle. It's just $20, and that helps us just to kind of pay for uh, the shuttle and the, uh, and the driver. I want to thank Homer Herndon again for helping us to organize that. Uh, we'll get you there and we'll get you back right up right after the event uh, to your car we will meet here uh, those who are riding the shuttle at spirit and truth sanctuary and i don't have uh, uh actually i do have it right here let's see i think uh we're leaving here at does it say in your bulletin 6 p.m yeah 6 p.m we're leaving um from here and then uh let's see pastor clarice also wants to invite you to a musical concert that's next sunday at 2 p.m uh, the Episcopal Church of the Incarnation, that's 2407 Cascade Road. It's actually just a stone's throw away from Hillside uh, Chapel and, and International Truth Center. So if you'd like to support uh, Pastor Clarice with that, she will be doing a piano duet with Bishop Jack Bomar. And uh, excited uh, to see that. Two weeks from today uh, will be our uh, dessert Sunday at, at uh, Spirit of Truth Sanctuary. And so take your insulin before you get here. Amen. <laughs> We will not be serving any healthy foods on that day. <laughs> uh, we'll have a fellowship after with different desserts from, uh, from different uh, members of our church. And so we like to do that a couple times a month just so that we are not a church that you come in, get your word, and leave. Uh, that you come in and experience the fellowship, the communion, being around other high and holy vibratory beings. It's important uh, for us to know each other. That's two weeks uh, from, uh, from today. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Mom, help me. I, I, could, I could feel something helping me. I just want to say, last Sunday you heard our pastor speak about spirit Hold on, and truth. Hold on. Okay, we're good. Can you hear me? Okay. So we have a lot of wonderful New Thought churches that believe everything that we preach here, or most of everything. We're, we might be a little bit ahead. But anyway, this is a wonderful Episcopal church that loves God, that loves people, that loves us. It's right across the street from the Hillside International Truth Center on Cascade Road, a 2407 Cascade Road. But I want you to know, we want to go in there and not only have truth, but take some spirit. Mm, beautiful. And so beautiful. our choir will be there. They're joining the Hillside Choir, mm -hmm. the Episcopal Choir, the duet. Our orchestra will be there 2 o'clock next Sunday afternoon. Beautiful. Thank you, Mom. Beautiful. <laughs> Our, our church evangelist, Pastor Clary Spock. That's our church evangelist right there. Outreach missions. Uh, also, I meant to say this at the um, at Bishop Pearson's portrait induction at Morehouse. Uh, Pastor Clary Spock and the wife of uh, Dean, uh, Dr. Dean Lawrence Carter, uh, Dr. Marva Carter, and uh, Pastor Chris will be playing a piano duet. Uh, she, Dr. Marva Carter, uh, was the music uh, musical uh, chair for Georgia State University for many decades. And so she's quite the accomplished uh, pianist as well. And so on the historic stage of the King Chapel, uh, playing on a piano, a grand piano that this church donated to Morehouse, uh, Pastor Clarius and Dr. Carter will share a piano duet together. And so it'll be an, an amazing day. Please make your uh, plans to be a part uh, next, uh, next uh, this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. It is a day to honor uh, what Bishop Pearson leaves to us as a legacy, as a lineage and to show up as Spirit and True Sanctuary to say we are proud of our bishop and everything that he stood for and leaves for us to carry on. Can you say amen to that? Amen, thank you for being patient during our announcements. Will you stand with me today? It's the first Sunday of April. It's a good day to be a giver. Amen, somebody. I've already gave my, uh, my tithe and offering this morning. I do a text to give. I just put in 84321, go into the line and enter the amount that I'm giving. It is really that, it's that quick. It's that easy to give. If you're giving by envelope, by check, by cash, uh, mailing it in, however you give it, let's give this morning in cheer. Let's give this morning knowing uh, that the same God who began a good work in us will see it to the day of completion. And let's make sure that as we sow this seed, we water it with thanksgiving and gratitude and joy, knowing that all good things are flowing to us and through us. Can you say amen to that today? Amen. You may be seated.
filled with love deep within the power take for granted the talent that we have in this house, uh, the voice of Benny Grizel, uh, the ministry of uh, Chris Williams. Will you tell them thank you for everything that they bring to us? Thank you, thank you. A few months ago, I was uh, connected uh, by spirit to uh, Apostle Charles Francis. He had been kind of following the ministry, showed up here on a Sunday, and we immediately had a connection. There was something that Spirit was doing through, through us, through our relationship, through the connection. And uh, I give thanks today. I went this week uh, to my mailbox. I asked uh, Apostle Francis a few weeks ago if he would bring the message today. And uh, I didn't know what I would say to introduce him uh, to, the, to the pulpit. And I went to my mailbox yesterday and pulled out uh, a letter from Allstate. And I saw the hands together and it just said, you're in good hands. Yes. And so I trust the spirit of this man. I trust the gifting. Uh, I trust the anointing. He is a prophet. He is a worship leader. He is a preacher. He is an apostle. He is a covering in his own right, but he feels a tremendous connection to spirit and true sanctuary in this season, which is kind of the firstborn among many brethren. There are many around the world that are feeling a connection to this movement right now. And so. Uh, as Carlton Pearson did many times in his life, introduced uh, people to his stage uh, and allowed uh, the gift to flow, the gift to be exposed and expressed. And so you are going to experience today an anointing uh, like you've never experienced before. I want him to take his time. I want him to uh, have his way today and I want him to follow whatever spirit tells him to do. I have learned to love this, this individual with all of my heart in a very short time. He is genuine, uh, he is caring, he is giving, and he is authoritative. You're gonna feel the Spirit of God in him today. I want you to stand to your feet. You are in good hands today with Apostle Charles Francis, amen. Come on, why are you clapping this time for the Lord? He's a good God, isn't he? Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do it again, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, get the cobwebs out of your throat this morning, hallelujah. 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 Listen, Hallelujah. listen. Have your seat really quickly and then we'll get started, uh, if you would. We give honor to Bishop Pope this morning. Can you clap your hands for our bishop? <laughs> and to Pastor Brandy and her accents and to, uh, 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 I call him uh, Carlton Pearson Jr. <laughs> bishop White, he looks just like Carl Pearson. <laughs> Amen. You, you almost want to say, is that you in your next iteration, Bishop? Because yeah, you, know, you look just like him. Amen. And then, of course, to Pastor Mike, my brother here, I love you so much. Congratulations to you. And Pastor LaDonna, Mom and Dad Polk. Amen. All of you, 
to God's great people. God bless each and every one of you. I pastor a church called The Creative Experience, and so some of my leadership from my church is here this morning. If you're here, can you stand this morning? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you all so much for being with me. Amen. A uh, couple of elders, a couple of deacons, and uh, 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 friends of mine are here as well. Okay, so I'm a little different. Is that okay? That's okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm a little different, so I'm preparing you now, okay? Um, we're going to do some activation today, so you won't be able to just sit and look at me, okay? We're going to do some activation um, because I really feel that there is a push for the anointing to be in this room permanently. Sometimes we are thinkers, but sometimes we don't have enough theology, correct? And so Bishop preached on that last week. He was talking about theology. I'm going to do a little bit of that today and then share a couple of things with you that I believe uh, will bless your life. Um, so I'll start with this. Um, what I want to do is I want all of us to get a partner and we're going to pray for about two minutes. I, catch this. I really believe prophetically that God is calling us to a place of prayer. And prayer is not to change God's mind. Prayer is not to change God's mind. I know that's usually what most people do. They say, okay, I'm in trouble. Let's pray. We got to change God's mind. Oh, we got to turn the tide, right? But that is not what prayer is for. Prayer is to ease your mind. Mm -hmm. Prayer is to change your mind. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of our minds have stinking thinking. And so in order for your mind to be changed, there must be prayer. And it's in that space that God begins to speak to you and help you to make that change. And so what we want to do today is we want to set an atmosphere of prayer that you can pray for your neighbor until there is a mind change. How many people can stand for their mind to change a little bit? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let, let's let's take it here. Pastor LaDonna, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a healthy guy, right? Uh, I'm not as fat as I used to be. Uh, praise God. Praise God. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Ain't that right, Pastor Mike? I mean, God is doing extraordinary things. I used to be 286, but now I'm 256. Ain't he a good God? Uh, and Pastor uh, Bishop D.E. always says to me, hey, I'm going to be working out today. Would you like to go? And nothing in my spirit says, come along and work out. So maybe as we pray today, my mind will change. <laughs> I'm hoping uh, <laughs> that maybe it will change once we start praying today. Anyway, long story short, um, a lot of times we're wanting things to happen, but we don't understand that what's happening for you is not happening uh, outside of you. It's happening in you. My grandmother used to say it like this. I was seeking for my savior and I found him in myself. Ain't that good? She said, I was seeking for my savior and I found him in myself. Well, it's in prayer that you understand that whatever you're looking for is living on the inside of you. It's not outside of you. We celebrate what's outside of you, but we don't celebrate enough what's on the inside of us. And so as we pray today, I want you to begin to celebrate what's on the inside of you, but not just what's on the inside of you, what's on the inside of the neighbor that you're going to pray for. So let's stand really quickly. and I want you to find a partner, not somebody that you know. Don't get your husband. Don't get your wife. Get somebody else. And you're going to grab them by both hands. Uh, uh, Tyson, can you go to C sharp for me? Yeah, we're there already. Okay. So this is what I'm hearing in my head. Boom, boom, boom. And I want you to do kind of like a, uh-huh. Like a uh, warfare. Boom, boom. Yeah. How you feeling, Chris? <laughs> boom, boom. Okay. And I want you to begin to pray. And I want you to pray out loud. This is not a time for you to be silent. I want you to begin to declare. I want you to begin to pray. Hallelujah. If you have a prayer language, begin to pray in that. Come on, pray, 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 pray. And we praise you, we glorify him. Awaken us, Father. Awaken us to more truth. Awaken us to more truth. Awaken us to more faith. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Pray like their life is depending on it. Come on, pray. Come on, pray, pray. I feel things getting better. I feel things changing. I feel you being activated.
shout it to the Lord. Come on, come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, shout. 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 Come on, shout. Shout. I'm feeling it. Come on, push. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. I love the cheese. hear people say oh I'm ready for a move of God <laughs> oh didn't we have a move of God and that sounds so nice doesn't it but God doesn't move God doesn't move mm -hmm. if I get up in the morning and leave the bedroom and go to the bathroom I didn't change houses the house remained I moved and what usually happens is we come to church wanting a move of God and so we don't move we're looking for something outside of ourselves to do the work so we're waiting for the preacher to make us move we're waiting for the prophet to prophesy we're waiting for some great cloud to come into the room to make us I was seeking for my Savior and I found him in myself and so you're not having a move of God you're moving 
in God. Are we here? Sometimes we don't know how big an elephant is because we're always sitting on the back of it. And an elephant is so big, you won't even know it has a trunk if you're sitting on the back. But it's imperative that we move around this elephant and see it from a different perspective so that we can know what exactly it looks like. Mm. But when it comes to God, there's some movement that needs to happen in the house so that we can see God from all perspectives. I tuned into YouTube one day and I saw the beloved Bishop Hawk with the basketball and he was turning it on his finger. He was doing this Harlem Globetrotter thing. Did y'all see that? And then we came to church that Sunday and he did the same thing. He, you know, he's showing his skills. I have none of those. And <laughs> I mean none. I have none of those. But he was talking about perspective. And we were all smiling and happy about that. But in order to get a different perspective, you got to do something that you never did. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that takes stepping out of your comfort zone. So I hear people all the time who say, and I've been in ministry 28 years. I've been hearing this all my life. I look really, really young, but I'm not as young as I look. And I've been hearing for a long time, people say, oh, I just wish I would have a move of God. Church was all right. It could have been better. Uh, I just wish the issue is, is not that something's wrong with God. It's that something's wrong with our perspective. And so when I go ahead and I put on glasses, uh, if, if, for those of you who have on glasses today, if I put my fingerprints all over those glasses or don't clean them before I put them on, I'll look at you and think that you have fingerprints on you. But the truth is there's something wrong with my perspective because there's nothing wrong with you. You don't have fingerprints. My glasses do. We have issues with our filter. Our filter of God is, is, is quite messed up. And so when we come to church, what needs to happen is there has to be a worship that hits the building so that our filter can get together. So that we're ready for the next week. Is that all right? All right, good. So that was the first thing I wanted to do and say. Now catch this. I'm a foodie. Anybody else love food? Y'all lying up here. I just got finished talking about us jollier people. And so the jolliness tells the story. The proof is just not in the pudding, but it's in the eating. Right? <laughs> the proof is just not in the pudding, but it's in the eating, right? So I love, I, I really do. I, ooh, I love food, praise the Lord. And I'm a foodie. So I love to go to different restaurants. And uh, By the way, you, you know, my shadow, Jerron, that y'all see all the time, he's not feeling well this morning, so he's watching. Y'all pray for him, okay? Um, but usually we be at every restaurant we can find to eat at. Oh man, I've been somewhere everywhere in Atlanta and all over the country eating. I enjoy good food. But the issue with that is some restaurants I go to, they have menus that are huge. Like you ever go to these diners and it's like, what am I supposed to do? Y'all got 10,000 things on this menu. I don't know what to, what to eat. What is good? I asked the, the waitress, what, what you like? You know, I, I'll be asking on, what you think? You've been here before? Asking the people in the booth nearby. Hey, what do you get when you come, right? Because you don't know what to get. And so I have this issue. Well, one of the places that I enjoy sometimes is Cheesecake Factory. And, but Cheesecake Factory has this huge menu. And they came up with something uh, about maybe three or four, maybe longer than that. Uh, uh, you'll like this Deacon McCoy. They came up with something uh, about maybe six or seven years ago called Small Plates small plates right and, and 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 so these small plates you go to cheesecake factory and you can experience lots of things that they have to offer in smaller portions at a cheaper price right well in new york it's a, uh, we don't necessarily call them small plates i'm from new york by the way and in new york we call them tapas so you can go to a tapas restaurant or a, a place and get tapas and it's several um, different uh, uh, the things that are on their menu or, or, or samples of the entree that is on the menu, right? And then you can get a taste of all of the things, right? So I will go with groups of friends and we'll get like 20 different tapas so that we can have or experience everything that's available for us to eat, correct? Now, only foodies would enjoy this because other people may say, you just greedy, apostle. Well, you call it whatever you want. That's not my business. If you think I'm greedy, that's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. Call me greedy, 
Speedy McGreedy, I don't care. I'm, I'm just there to eat and have my experience. So what I want to do today is, or what I've already started to do, is to give you some small plates of what I believe prophetically the Lord wants to speak to us today. So you're not going to get a, a, a message with a, a three points in a close. You're going to get several plates for you to take along with you. And if, I like the way Bishop says it, he says, I prepared a lot of food today. Eat what you like, right? Well, I'm going to say the same thing to you and tell you to get a doggy bag. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Get a doggy bag so you can take this home. Now, hopefully you won't be like me because I don't like leftovers. And so if I get a doggy bag and take it home, the refrigerator will be eating it because I don't really like leftovers. But hopefully you can get as much as you can today while you're here. All right. So we started with prayer. Was that good? Yeah. Feel like you got some breakthrough? Good, good. If you didn't, practice it. Practice it. I hear people say practice makes perfect. Well, I go deeper. Perfect practice makes perfect, right? I'm a musician. So if I want to practice something, perfect practice makes perfect, right? Uh, Bishop has a couple of guitars, right? And so I've grabbed one of his guitars a couple of times trying to... Mm -hmm. The minister of music from our ministry is here and he teases me all the time because I said, one Sunday I'm going to get up with my guitar. I'm going to do, and he'd be like, we're not interested. <laughs> See, they think I'm musical over here. You know? He'd be like, I'm, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do my thing, you know, because I want to, so I've been picking it up, trying to practice a little bit, you know, because I want to do whatever. But here's the issue. If you're practicing terrible, you're going to be terrible. You can say all day, I practice. But if you practice terrible, you're going to be terrible. So perfect practice, right, makes perfect. Okay. When I go to the dry cleaners, I told you I'm different. I take things to the dry cleaners like this is one of my preaching uniforms. And you can't put it in the washing machine. Because it's this type of silk that if you put it in the washing machine, it will look weird when it comes out. So I always want it to be in its best show when I get up before the people. So when you want it to look its best, what do you do? You dry clean it. Oh my goodness. You dry clean it. And so if you put something in the washing machine, true enough, it's clean. You can try to iron it and do whatever you do, and that's great. But if you want it to have its best show, you have to do what? The dry cleaners. Y'all getting tired on me already? The dry cleaners. Because you want it to be in its best show. Apostle, where are you going with this? God is making us to be in our best show. And so when something gets dry cleaned, it is put under heat and pressure so that it can be its best show. Mm -hmm. So I started looking up what they do when you put things in the dry cleaners, and I thought that they just did some kind of drying. You know, it's a dry thing. Well, I found out, no. Uh, 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 it's a wet process and they use something called solvents right solvents are a, a liquid that breaks down uh, 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 other things right so once this solvent is put on your clothing it breaks down every germ every issue whatever every smell everything that's on your clothing every all of that stuff it breaks it down so that you are now clean and then after it's done being cleaned and put through that process they take it and they put it under a press correct and usually in that press, every impurity that's left after the solvent has done its job begins to be released into the atmosphere or the air. Oh, y'all got to go with me here. I need to talk back church. And so what's happening here is what God does with us is he drops us in some situations that are kind of like solvents. You understand? And it breaks down every stinking thinking or idea that you have come up with all of your life. And then after that, he takes you through a process of putting you in a press that applies heat and pressure. And under the heat and pressure, it takes you to your next, I feel something here. It takes you to your next space. Who am I talking to? here I don't know what kind of stuff been going on with you but I do know that heat and pressure is making you into your best show touch somebody next to you and say neighbor if you're under heat and pressure you will become your best show Woo ask me how I know some days I'll be like, God, can we, uh, can we do this a different way? God, is there some other type of thing we can do? 
You ever found yourself trying to bargain with God? God, if we can just do it this way, then I'll be okay. God, if we can just skip that part, will you be honest? You know, a lot of times we get up and we testify all of the great stuff. And we leave out the chapters that we don't want other people to hear, right? But the deliverance is in the chapters that you keep quiet. You come out looking like pure gold and you come up and say, I'm pure gold. And we're all excited. But then we're sitting in the audience going, God, why are they pure gold and I'm not? What is the difference between them and me? The difference is they didn't tell you about the chapters that made them into. They didn't tell you about the divorce. They didn't tell you about the separation. They didn't tell you about the bankruptcy. They didn't tell you about the molestation. They didn't tell you about the scandal. They didn't tell you about anything like that. But those things right there, even though we don't like them. And even though they hurt and we don't like to talk about them. They're making us into our best show. It's called heat and pressure. Am I okay, Bishop? All right. <sighs> that was small page number three. Here's small page number four. I am, <laughs> told you I was different. Man. I am really blessed by butterflies. When I was a little boy, my grandmother would have these butterfly magnets on the refrigerator. I don't know if they do refrigerated magnets anymore. But when coming. <laughs> When I was coming up, we had magnets on the refrigerator. If you was a kid, you'd go up to the refrigerator, be moving the magnets. You know, at least that's what I did. All right. <laughs> so I love butterflies. But in school, they begin to show us the process of this butterfly called metamorphosis, right? Mm hmm And so um, we love the outcome or what butterflies look like. But most times, we ignore the process of how it becomes this. I came up with a phrase that I, that I say, and uh, I might have to break it down so that you can understand it, but I say, don't diss the caterpillar and sweat the butterfly. <laughs> Let me repeat it. <laughs> don't diss the caterpillar and sweat the butterfly. Now, so let me do translation. This is a word that came out in the 90s <laughs> and it means do not disrespect or, or, or talk about in a, in a negative way or disregard a certain thing, right? So don't diss the caterpillar and sweat. Hey, back in the day, you know, why are you sweating me? You know what I mean? Why are you all up on me? You know, like back up off me, you know? Y'all understand what that means, right? And so do not sweat the caterpillar. I mean, do not diss the caterpillar and sweat the butterfly means do not disregard the caterpillar or its assignment or its transformation or the things that it has to do uh, 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 and, and be excited about this butterfly because that's normally what we do. We get excited about people's glory, but we ignore their story. And so we don't, we don't, we don't want to hear any of that, right? You know, and so, um, but, but there is a process that caterpillars go through that is important. And one in particular is this caterpillar called the woolly bear caterpillar. Y'all heard of him before? He's a brown and black caterpillar, very, very fluffy. And it has all of these different things that go along with it, saying that it can predict when the winter's coming, da da da, da, da. I'm not going to get into all of that. I, I let the scientists do that. I'm not a scientist, okay? But I will say to you that this woolly bear caterpillar uh, 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 goes through a process. As a matter of fact, it's born in the fall, right? In autumn. And then when winter comes, it does something that no other caterpillar does. It goes to sleep. And some even thinks it dies. As a matter of fact, it has something on the inside of it. And hopefully I'm still keeping you. Uh, it has something on the inside of it, almost like an antifreeze. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This hormone that lives on the inside of it, almost like antifreeze, so that when the winter comes and even though its body freezes, its insides and what it's made of does not go to sleep and does not freeze because it has something on the inside. I like to call it the Holy Ghost. You may call it spirit. I don't know what you want to call it, but I, I like to call it the Holy Ghost. 
and that Holy Ghost lives on inside of it so that no matter what's going on on the outside of it no matter what's happening on the outside of it it's preserved on the inside anybody can testify that there's been so many things that have happened on the outside of you but God yet preserved you on the you don't know how you made it it was all kind of hell going on on the outside of you but there was something preserved on the inside of you and I can imagine that that caterpillar would be thinking in its head Lord I'm dying I'm freezing here. He doesn't even know that there's something that's going to make sure that he still wakes up. There's some things in your life that can put you in such a deep sleep. Put you in in such a rough place that you begin to say, "Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. And somehow, y'all not going to talk to me here. Somehow, when you wake up from your deep sleep, you say, oh my God, I don't know how I made it. It was because spirit, y'all... When everything around me was saying something different, spirit was still living on the inside of me. I was seeking for my Savior, and I found him. So he, he lives. He wakes up at the end of winter. And could you imagine he gets out of that? You ever come out of something? You're like, whoo. <laughs> God, I made it out. Sure don't want no more of that, though. <laughs> Please, don't, don't sign me up. <laughs> if the Christian Jubilee is like this, I pass. <laughs> I want to do something else. I can imagine that caterpillar is thinking, ooh, I got out of that. I climb around and do something else. Well, it also has something else living in the inside of it called a juvenile hormone. Mm-hmm, you can look it up. Juvenile hormone. I thought that was so interesting. A juvenile hormone? This hormone, you know, juvenile means young, uh, uh, what else? Say it again. Adolescent, what else? Immature. Y'all was being so nice. <laughs> Immature, childish, childlike, right? So it has this juvenile hormone, Micah, on the inside of it that says, as long as that juvenile hormone is uh, producing a lot, then it tells the caterpillar that it can't change. Let me say that again. There's a meter inside of this caterpillar. Isn't God amazing how he made us? We have our own meters on the inside of us that tell us when. There's a meter in the caterpillar that says, you still are too immature, you can't change. Could you imagine he's crawling on the floor, he's a floor dweller. You know, I'm not gonna talk to me here. If he gets anywhere that's high, he had to jump on and get a ride to get there. When you're in an immature state, anything that you experience that's amazing, you normally have to hop a ride to get there. We don't want to talk about it, but the truth of the matter is, you're complaining about where you are, but the truth is, there's a juvenile hormone on the inside of you that tells you, you're not ready yet. So if you want to get there, you're going to probably have to hit your ride. And there's some times when people's cars are full and they don't want to take you. Let's just be honest. There's some times when the car ain't full and I still don't want to take you. Juvenile hormone, when there's a lot of it, it tells the caterpillar, you cannot grow. You can't change. Could you imagine? He sees the other caterpillars, his homie that was just with him. All of a sudden, he looks up Where he went? I was just with Pookie and them. (laughs) Where did Pookie? Junebug is gone? In just a few short weeks, he sees Junebug. He like, wait a minute. Mm, That don't look like Junebug. But it do kind of sound like, Junebug, is that you? My name ain't Junebug no more, but yeah. I, I used to be that. We was just down here. What did you do? How did you get that body? He said, I grew up. Can you tell me how to grow up, Juba? I can't tell you how to grow up. That's on the inside of you. You were seeking. You were seeking for your, you got to find them in yourself. 
So when he finally figures that out, that juvenile hormone decreases. And then something on the inside of him tells him, Chris, it's time to go up. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. There's something on the inside of me telling me it's time to take off. Oh, y'all not ready. Tell, tell the person on the other side of you, say neighbor. There's something living on the inside of me that's telling me it's time to take off. Okay, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Something on the inside of me telling me it's time to take off. Well, bigger than the fact that it's just spirit saying it's time, your growth says, your maturity says, your willingness to have the beginner's mind and to unlearn everything that you thought you knew. Yeah. Tearing down and deconstructing everything that you came up with over your time. And it does not matter how long, how long you've been doing it or how old you may be. When you submit to the Christ consciousness, my definition of Christ, I like to describe him this way. Christ is the wisdom and power of God. And so if there's wisdom and power, it causes me to walk in maturity. And when I walk in that wisdom and power or that Christ consciousness, it causes me to be ready to take off. And that sounds good within itself, but he's not done. He realizes that he's become mature, but he still has not killed what needs to die. So he now wraps himself in a chrysalis or a cocoon. And he's no longer fluffy and brown. He's black and looks dead. You are, you are more famous when you die. I know we don't like it. We love Martin Luther the King, right? <laughs> Y'all can laugh a little bit. Martin Luther the King, that's what I said. We love him. But when Martin Luther King lived, everybody didn't love him. He was not welcomed in pulpits across America. I know what you read now, but that's not how that went. He was much like our bishop here. He was much like Bishop Pearson. He was coming with a concept that people did not want to hear. And so they would shun him and say, we don't want you here. Mm -hmm. And so now we're all excited. We're gonna build a Martin Luther King Center. You can't go in any city in this country and there's not a Martin Luther King Drive street, place, boulevard, right? But it didn't happen when he was here. It happened when he died. Oh, okay. Jesus the Christ was not liked when he was living. He became famous when he died. I beloved Bishop Carlton Pearson was famous when he lived like people wanted him to live, but I tell you, he sure went famous and viral when he died. People started saying, oh, I believe in the message when he died. When he was living, they didn't have enough guts to say, I believe or stand with you. But when he died, everybody was ready to be there. Isn't it amazing? That at your funeral, everybody will come and they ain't never even been to your birthday party. How is it that you make it out to look at me in the casket, but you can't make it out to look at me at the table to blow out my candles? It's because you are more important when you die. It's a sick understanding, but that's how it goes. Okay. Lazarus. Mm -hmm. In John chapter 11, he was a good guy. Scripture even, you know, kind of purports that he was Jesus' friend. People say, Jesus cried, Jesus wept. That's the only time we see him wept in the scripture. And that was because it was his friend. Or some people say it's because he's in, in touch with the infirmities of everybody. He felt the pain. And so he went to go see about Lazarus. Well, Lazarus had a whole bunch of mourners there with his sisters because he had died. 
And I bet there were plenty of people who never visited him while he was sick. They just showed up because he was dead. There are some people in your life, I hate to say it this way, who are not excited as long as you're doing well. But the minute things begin to fall apart in your life, you become famous because now everybody's discussing your downfall or your death. I, I'm, I'm preaching real good here. They're all excited about your downfall and your death, but we're going to handle that in just one second here. The caterpillar thought he had escaped. Y'all still here? I just want to make sure I move around too fast. He thought he had escaped death, but he didn't. He had to take the ultimate death to see what Junebug saw. Somebody say, take the death walk. Ooh, that don't feel good, do it. Say it again, take the death walk. Okay, so he gets into this chrysalis and everything he knew or thought he was has now been deformed. The descriptions even in, uh, when you look it up says that his insides turn to soup. Turns to stew. There's no recollection of who he used to be. Can I say that God is putting some of us through some things so that there's no recollection of who you used to be? I say it like this. The same beast that you see and vegetation that you see at the bottom of the mountain is not the same vegetation or beast that you see at the top. In order to be at the top of the mountain, there must be a molecular change because your uh, system as it is does not match what you would need to be at a higher elevation. The, 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 the lungs of a caterpillar cannot handle what the lungs of a butterfly would handle. And to go into high spaces, there must be a change in us that looks nothing like it used to be. So God allows you to go through a death of sorts. He allows you to go through a change of sorts that removes you from looking like you used to look almost to the point of being unrecognizable. So for all of you that say, I feel like I'm losing myself, you are. For all of you that have been saying, I don't feel like myself anymore, I'm just trying to get back to myself. No. For all of you that came out of the pandemic and said, I'm just looking for some sense of normalcy. No. All of you that came out and said, oh, I just so glad I could just go back to church and do what I used to do it and just get back to blah, 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 blah. You are off. Yes, I said that. You are off. The whole point of you going through this is for you to have transformation. Jesus, Lazarus is dying. He did it. You didn't come. We told you he was dead three days ago. And now it's day four and you have not come. You have pushed him past resurrection. He can't even get up now. I thought he was your friend. Jesus, this is Mary and Martha you're talking to. We, are, we like your sisters. We called you. You said he was the one you loved. You out here healing all these people and you ain't come see about him? Okay, let me bring it to your face. Y'all my family, I'm going through. You don't call me? I'm in the hospital, nobody came to see me? Are you kidding me? Do you not know that sometimes God will allow people's hearts and minds to be turned from you because you're in a place of transformation? And he does not intend for you to be removed from that place. Okay, you need help. Mm -hmm. You need help. I, 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 I got you. Peter, Jesus is homie. And they get ready to come get him. Peter's ready to cut off ears, cuss people out. And Jesus says, get thee behind me. Satan? Did he really just call Peter Satan? <laughs> did, you, did you call Peter Satan? No, he didn't really call Peter Satan, but he called the space that Peter was in satanic because it was coming against the will of God for his life. How many times did you say, God, you late? It's 11, 59, 59. And you know I needed help and you did not come. What happens when God is late? 
See, the issue is, like I said before, we testify and say, oh, he's always on top. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on top. You know, we sing all of these kind of songs and, whoo, you excited until that thing come for you. And you be like, hey, Jesus, I thought you was never late. Spirit, you seem to be late. It's not just 1159.59, it's 12.01. You are past time. Jesus shows up and he says, don't fret. She says, well, I won't fret, Jesus. I know he's going to wake when the great trumpet sounds. And it's going to be okay. And he said, uh-uh, sweetheart. I am the resurrection. I, I know, I know, I know. I, you, you, you're waiting for something else that you heard about. Some, some kind of fairy tale. Because until you experience it, it is a fairy tale. Right? You're waiting for that. But, but, but it's here right now. It's here right now. And I had to be late. Because you got a whole bunch of fried chicken at your house and cake. My friend, her husband died. He was killed and murdered. And she called me. I was the first person she called on the phone. She said, Apostle, my husband is dead. And I don't want no stupid chicken at my house either. <laughs> Y'all can laugh a little bit. Because we laughed. She said, he's dead and I don't want no stupid chicken at my house either. What she was trying to declare is, I don't want the mourners. Because it's already happened, and it happened for a reason. And I don't understand it just yet, but I will not mourn what has already happened. There's a change going on in you that has caused you to be at a point of death. And God says, do not mourn. And do not allow people to make you mourn what is done. Somebody say, it's finished. Get ready to close here. He gets up. That's wonderful. Caterpillar comes out of the cocoon changed if you look it up it says that it sits around for about a day just flapping wings and as it flaps his wings there is this uh, I was getting ready to say serum but it's not that's not the word <laughs> there is more hormones that are put into his wings to make him stronger he flaps the wings he flaps the wings he flaps the wings until he's ready to take off and fly and he's changed and what he used to eat, he don't eat no more. And what he used to do, he don't do no more. And if he stays in one place too long, he has predators ready to take him out. So he can't even dwell on the ground with the rest of them. Did y'all catch that? Sometimes change changes your company. Sometimes elevation brings separation. Uh-huh. And it's not because I'm better than you, it's just because I'm at a different stage. And what I need right now is a little bit different than what I needed before. What I need at 43 is completely different than what I needed at 23. And much different than what I needed at 13. Death makes you famous. Resurrection makes you hate it. Death makes you famous. Resurrection makes you hate it. Lazarus gets up. Jesus calls him out. I could spend all day talking about that, but I won't. Calls him out of the grave. Lazarus gets up, and everybody's, ooh, Lazarus. I can imagine if they had Facebook Live, Instagram, <laughs> all of this other stuff, they would have been, everybody would have their phones out. Oh, my God, did y'all just see? I'm live from the tomb. Lazarus. <laughs> Live from the tomb. Lazarus just got up. That dude was dead. <laughs> you, you see this guy? Jesus. He got, it's going down. Y'all missing it. Right? Hmm. In chapter, that's the chapter 11. Chapter 12, mm -hmm, the scripture declares that they come looking for Jesus to crucify him. But I read something that I hadn't really read before. And, and they said, and we're looking for Lazarus too because we got to kill him. This is where I want to hang my nail. Mm -hmm. We're not just here to kill Jesus, but we're here to kill Lazarus too. I'm like, what? what? He just got out of another sticky situation. <laughs> you know, it took him out of one pair, you're going to put him in another? Sheesh. I bet Lazarus like, I ain't even do nothing. 
I could have stayed dead. Jesus the one came in there. <laughs> Jesus, why you did this to me? Now these people want me too. Why do they want him? They want him because he is the proof of the ministry. He is the proof of the God consciousness or the Christ consciousness. And so they say, not only do we want to kill Jesus, but we want to kill the evidence that he ever existed, that he ever, ever been here before. And I want to talk to some people that not only did it feel like some things were happening to you, but it was happening to the people that were connected to you. What the enemy wanted to do was to kill the evidence that you ever existed. When I beloved Bishop Pearson, they thought it ended when he died. Finally. Finally. He didn't love God no way. He didn't believe in hell. You know, people get in the forest to say, he didn't believe in God. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? He don't believe in God. Wait, stop it. You know, we carry things to the next dimension. Stop it. You, you have no knowledge. But it didn't die with him. The evidence is still living. And this is why you can't give up on what you're doing. This is why you can't stop your trek or your journey. This is why you can't allow bad talk to disrupt you. My, pro my final prophetic point today is, and I hope you would go with me prophetically, we have a leader who has a huge responsibility. Would you agree? Yeah. I'm gonna do something today uh, and I told you I'm going to move prophetically because I want us to understand we can do maintenance on house but the biggest maintenance come in on your roof you can fix every wall in there you can change the plumbing you can put up new drive I mean you can do new carpet but if the roof caves in the house is done if you get a leak and you don't fix it the house is done spirit and truth and everybody across the world we have an assignment to our leader mm -hmm. to make sure that we hold him up because the enemy wants to kill the evidence. The first part of this I preach to you, but the enemy wants to kill the evidence. Mm -hmm. I heard Bishop tell this testimony about how he's been plugging at this for the last 20 years and pretty much quiet. You guys have been eating that for 20 years quietly. But when Bishop Pearson died, it was no longer quiet. Mm -hmm. And so now it puts us in a different responsibility and a different path to protect who carries the message. Can y'all go with me prophetically here? No, we're not, we're not lifting up one man. That's not what I'm doing. But I need for you to understand when God wants to get something done, he selects people to do that. And then he surrounds that person with people to make sure that it's carried out. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, Lazarus is proof. And so, Bishop Polk is proof. And so, you are proof. And we must do everything in our power. That includes better prayer life. That includes better understanding. That includes not arguing over what happens in this house. That includes you no longer have a seat. Yes, you don't own a seat at church because the world is coming here. You can't have a seat when the world is coming. Yeah, you, 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 don't, you don't get a select parking space when the world is coming. You may come to church one Sunday, ain't no seats. I need better help than that because y'all are the sweetest people I have ever known. When I come, in, I mean, when I come to church, y'all just so sweet. Everybody hugs and kisses it, and y'all mean it. I, I'm telling y'all, y'all dynamic. But I'm here to shift you prophetically because you soon will not be sitting on a pew by yourself. 
you soon will sometimes be in church and don't know half of the people sitting in there. Because there is, a, there is an assignment on the house. So I want to do something today and it's a humble thing but our bishop, his family, the first half of ministry, he went through some heavy things. And we family, right? So there's no need to repeat. But there were a lot of things. And no matter how great you are, those things can affect and even be heavy upon your heart. Our job is to make sure that his heart is not heavy. Our job is to make sure that he can do what he needs to do for the next season that we're stepping into. And this season is not just for Atlanta, Georgia or for Spirit and Truth Sanctuary. It is for the world. Now, there are many of you in here that are intercessors and you've been praying for this day and didn't know that it would actually show up. But I came to announce that your prayers are coming to fruition. Because it's going to the world. So today, Benny, can you help me? Um, Bishop, can you stand real quick? Um, and two, can I have some help to move the podium, if you would? Okay, thank you. Holy Spirit told me to wash Bishop's feet today. Come and be seated, Bishop. And the reason why is not for a show, but it's because we're going to wash away the past. In the scripture, whenever you would go to a house because you had a long journey, first thing they would do is get those pots out and wash your feet. They wash your feet to wash the journey off of you. My grandmother would say, <laughs> I say a lot of things my grandmother would say because she raised me. She would say, yeah, go in there and wash the day off you. <laughs> and that thing used to crack me up. Or if we travel, she'd be like, go and wash that travel off of you. You've been in the airport, she'd be like, go wash the airport off you. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to wash Bishop's feet and we're going to wipe away. We're going to wipe away, wash away things of the past, hurts of the past, misunderstanding of the past, things that came to destroy or to come against, things that he didn't even do, and things that he made, made mistakes in to learn. He's had a hard job he's had to grow into his throne in front of everybody you ever grew up in front of everybody some people don't understand that they had the luxury of growing up inside of their house with their mom and their dad and that's it it's a little different when you grow up in kingdom I know because I'm a preacher's kid whatever you do is brought publicly broadcast they gonna preach about you on Sunday Pastor Ladonna you know what I'm talking about they're going to share. They're going to say all kinds of stuff. But we're going to wash that away today for the assignment. And we're going to speak into him his newness. I'm going to ask Tyson to play a little bit. And if you all want to stand and pray, you can while I do this. And then uh, also, pastors, can you come up here and join me? Oh, my, 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 my.
standing. Pastor Ladonna, if you could come stand to Bishop. I'm going to dry your feet in one second, Bishop. The Spirit of the Lord would say to you today, when we were talking, I knew I could not speak to you uh, in the manner in the office because I knew that the Holy Spirit was leading me to speak to you prophetically. For the Lord has given you a pen. I know you don't want to, but he's given you a pen of a ready writer. For the Lord would say to you, it is time for you to begin to put down not just revelation, but the story. There is a story, and through the story, your healing. Pastor Lonnie, put your hand on her belly. That the story will come alive. That you will be free. Fresh wind. Fresh wind. Fresh wind. Fresh wind, fresh wind, and strength for the journey. Strength for the journey. Strength for the journey. The Lord speaks to you today, even Pastor LaDonna, and says this. He says that this is not only that, but this is an hour of evangelism for you. For there are many friends who you have known, many friends, the people that you have known. But the Lord said this is a time that they will be drawn to you. 
and the healing virtue that comes out of your belly and out of your mouth and even in your hands. Somebody help me up here. That bigness was getting to me. I wouldn't go be able to get up. Would you let me touch your belly? There's a fire. There's a fire that you run from, but you can't run from anymore. For the Lord would say to you, I put fire in your belly since the beginning. And even to the point where there are other things that you don't necessarily disagree with, you just don't do because you know it's not in your wheelhouse to do as far as living. But you can't do it because there's a fire that's being produced on the inside of you. I speak to the fire today. Prophetic fire. There's a heavy gift of discernment upon you. There's even a protective spirit upon you. You protect your family and you protect people who are like family. And you do not tolerate anything that is outside of that. He's made you a warrior and he says to you today that I'm proud of you for keeping it together keeping it to being the glue proud of you for being the glue proud of you for being the glue and the fire shall burn and the fire shall burn and the fire shall burn Christ's name. Can we all celebrate the Lord? Come on, clap your hands. Come on. I know it's a little different, but come on. Oh, my, my, my. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so. help me with that really quickly thank you all listen we got a responsibility will, will, will we take that responsibility come on will we take that responsibility we're going into the world come on come on spirit and truth come on we're going into the world and we're going to make sure it goes to that next place that it's supposed to go to um pastor clarice i love you so much where are you can you come just want to grab your hand we speak strength can you point your right hand this way to pastor Claire Reese look at you you're already pointing your hand to other people because that's the type of person you are but we're bringing strength to you this day oh God strength for the journey because it's not over by a long shot take from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet we speak strength strength for the journey clap your hands and let's declare I love y'all thank you <laughs> thank you we just love to do what the spirit of the Lord does wants us to do um since we're in this space, should we, should we do prayer for people who want prayer now? You want to do that now? Come on, pastors, we're going to come down. And the pastors are going to spread out all over the room. If you need a touch, all over the room, they're going to be in the aisles and everywhere. If you need a touch from the Lord today, you can get it. You need us to agree with you today, you can get it. God, I praise you. Come on, we can spread out, pastors. We need some in the middle aisle, some different places. And come on, you can just begin to come. Grab a pastor and they will pray with you. Come on, you can come from wherever you are. You want special prayer today? You want somebody to touch and agree with you? And it's already happening. Thank you, Lord. Come on, don't be shy. Come right on down. Come right on down. Come right on down. You need strength for the journey? Come right on down. God, I thank you.
on and let's keep that prayer. Lord, we love you. We adore you, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. good food on it and I pray that you will make it applicable to your life in various instances and circumstances because this movement that Bishop Pearson has started and it's no accident or coincidence 
that Bishop D.E. Park is continuing in succession, that this will influence, impact, and inundate the planet in a way that has never been experienced before. I believe it's in the book of Zephaniah. It talks about that the glory of the knowledge of the Lord shall cover the earth like waters that cover the sea. We are about to be flooded with knowledge. With knowledge. Father, we thank you tonight or this afternoon for the word. We thank you for your grace that we still call amazing. Thank you for the seed that we sowed this afternoon. Never leaves our life, but it goes into our future. We thank you for multiplication, increase more than enough. I thank you for unexpected, anticipated miracles, signs and wonders that will befall upon these your people this week. In the nature of the Christ, we thank you and we give your name all praise and so it is for the spirit of the lord is in this place spirit come for this is a new day new day and I will do great things for you I will bring new words to you you but I feel the anointing right now wow somebody say new thing we're resting to our feet all over them we're standing all over them Father, we thank you. 
I bless every person in this room. May this anointing that we feel now continue with us all week long. Continue to do new things in us, through us, as us, as we encounter various people throughout the week. Let your spirit, your presence, your power, your glory work through us. My soul will get that. Don't do that to me.